become such a popular arms provider? Well, there's a, there's a number of reasons. Uh, firstly, the Chinese equipment is cheap. Uh, secondly, China provides not just the equipment, but also a lot of the technologies uh, to its, its prime, prime customers, which are in the developing countries in Asia and Africa and some in the Middle East. And another reason is, is that China provides these countries with, with not just the equipment and not just the technologies, but it also does it on very reasonable terms. So these countries actually don't need cash. They, they have assets, whether that be some oil and gas or other commodities that China perhaps wants. And then China will barter with that, with that, uh, with that country and, and exchange for the military equipment and sometimes with loans from Chinese banks as well. So it makes it very easy for a developing country uh, to acquire these systems and military equipment from China. So last year we had the US and Russia blocking this treaty. This year are there fears that China is going to be the spanner in the works? Well, I, it, it, it could be so. I mean, China has uh, a record of um, transferring military equipment to the likes of North Korea, Syria and Iran. And that, that, that obviously is a problem. And that obviously is what the, the treaty is designed to stop. China uh, uh, says that it doesn't. But, uh, for example, last month, only last month, the US, the United States, put sanctions on a number of state-owned Chinese defense industry uh, companies there that are that, that, that the US said was was selling to the likes of North Korea um, and so China may uh, put a st spanner in the work so to speak but um, I think China will say that it will go along with these uh, the, 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 the treaty the proposed treaty but whether it's implemented according to the rules is, is yet mm. another different is a different matter yeah that brings me on to my next question it being an incredibly difficult business to regulate because of course so much of it also operates in the shadows when you've got sort of tiny arms markets in the middle of rural china you've got individual arms dealers such as the notorious victor boot who of course was uh, found there in bangkok How, will this treaty be able to yeah. actually do the job of regulating the trade well, um, if I'm honest, probably not. It would probably have to be. It would be very difficult for it to do so. And the reason is, is because, China, for example, China does its military trade on a very government-to-government -government basis. And so, not all, for example, not all its trade will be will be announced. And it would it would do government-to-government -government deals um, with the particular government. And often nearly in all cases these 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 military trade that china undertakes is not in competition with other uh with other countries and so and so therefore the trade is very um under the table so to speak and it's not and it's not uh, recorded uh, often and and therefore you know it can only be found out when the arms have already tra been transferred um and on or on their way and so therefore it makes it very very difficult when to, when, when China is dealing with a developing country um, or a country that, that already has sanctions imposed on it, such as North Korea, because there is no way to, 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 introduce, to introduce laws that will be able to trace the, the, um, the content and the goods that are, that are transferred. John Gravatt, great to speak to you. Thanks for joining us from Bangkok.